Uh, welcome to the channel everybody. Today I have this uh, EGR cooler. This is of uh, Cummins X15, which is that truck right there with that engine. Uh, as you know, Cummins X15 is the newest version of the Cummins engines in uh, heavy duty market on heavy duty hauling trucks. And the reason why I have this EGR cooler here is because it's bad, it's letting coolant uh, leak to the combustion chamber, to the intake manifold, to the exhaust, because, you know, it's normal that EGR coolers go bad. Um, it is very important to refer to this right now because this is a very common problem for diesel engines. It doesn't matter what kind of engine you have. You can have a Detroit, you can have a Packard, you can have a Cummins, Volvo. They all have similar problems with the EGR coolers. EGR coolers go bad, they start leaking within the EGR cooler and start letting coolant flow to the exhaust but to understand how this works we have to actually see the truck to, to see the system so you can see why this happens and how it happens so today i'm going to explain you using this Cummins x15 egr cooler so for that let's get this egr cooler closer to the truck right here so the EGR cooler goes in this position. This is the intake, basically, of the EGR cooler. And this is the exhaust right here on this area, on the back. So the pressure comes from this area and is being cooled by the coolant over here because remember the exhaust gases are hot. So coolant flow enters from here and exits from here. So the coolant is going to reduce the temperature of the exhaust in the travel. But during this travel, there are specific lines, specific veins where the coolant travels and those crack over the time and that is what led the coolant in the exhaust cavities and that goes to the engine after a while. Anyway, so how it works is and this is for any engine it doesn't matter if you have a detroit uh, cummins volvo doesn't matter even small diesel engines still work the same the flow of the exhaust could be different but the basis of it is the same so here is the exhaust manifold and in this case for this cummins um, engine and mainly for any cummins engine you have to remove the turbo to uh, get access to the egr cooler because it's behind the turbo but um, the exhaust manifold has this little bracket over here then goes around and connects to the EGR cooler right here. So when uh, the uh, EGR cooler um, is on duty, it needs an open flow and when it is not on duty, it needs a closed flow. So that is the reason why we need an EGR valve. The EGR valve is located over here, which is this one right here on this Cummins engine. And it's very similar for Cummins uh, ISX, ISX 15s, very similar. So it was located in the same position. Probably the materials and the brand of the valve is different, but most of the time they use the same components, doesn't matter um, uh, if it's ISX or F16s. Uh, so that over there, opens and closes depending on the circumstances. If the engine requires to reduce the temperature in the combustion chamber, it will ask for some EGR cooler flow, and that will be controlled for the valve. When that valve opens, it allows the flow from here, from the exhaust, to the EGR cooler. So when that happens, the coolant then is trapped in here travels all the way through the EGR valve all the way to the intake manifold. This pipe goes around to the intake manifold. And that's the reason why you start getting coolant consumption. But remember then the coolant only gets in because the coolant system has pressure. And the reason why the coolant system has pressure is because over the timing, over the time the engine is working, it creates temperature and the, cre and the temperature creates pressure. Uh, since the coolant system is a sealed system, it's going to build a specific pressure. Between 10 to 15 psi, that's the pressure then um, a coolant system builds. 
and depending on the temperature that is the pressure you want to have and that will be controlled from with the cap over here the coolant cap will control the amount of temperature I mean the amount of pressure you want to have and if you open the cap of course you want to release the pressure but if you keep it closed it will um, adjust the pressure to a specific level if the pressure is a lot it will release the pressure and if the pressure is on uh, working um, uh, numbers and working um, a range it will just keep it the way it is so when the pressure goes high over there usually happens when you are going uphill or when you're hauling a heavy load because the temperature is raising up very fast you are going to have a lot of coolant pressure in the system so the coolant pressure is going to pressurize the coolant in the EGR cooler and the EGR cooler of course because it's broken is going to let the coolant in the exhaust flow which is this area over here and that is going to travel to the intake so it is not just like uh, something simple like the EGR cooler breaks and start leaking coolant just for no reason no it has some kind of science between all this so you have to understand how the EGR cooler works and how it gets damaged um, if for any reason you don't have pressure in the system it still is going to leak coolant to the combustion chamber uh, to the combustion chamber to the intake manifold because it's normal then you are still going to create pressure but if it's not enough pressure to let, uh, to let a lot of coolant in the system, you are going to reduce the amount of coolant that you are going to be uh, consuming during your travel. So if for any reason you detect in your truck, your, uh, any engine, it doesn't matter what engine you have, but for any reason you start feeling then it is consuming coolant every 1,000 miles, every 2,000 miles with no other problems, just a coolant consumption, probably, um, it is good then you open the coolant cap so that way it doesn't build any pressure so that way you can get to the city of destination to get it fixed because in some occasions the EGR cooler can break completely and that coolant is going to go directly to the combustion chamber and that is going to destroy your engine um, it is just a little uh, detail about how the EGR cooler works and as I say, I, I'm using these Cummins ISX, I mean Cummins X15 as an example on how this works. And uh, as you can see, this is a 2020 truck and they still have the same problem than 2008 trucks had, uh, 2006 trucks had, EGR coolers going bad because the components inside the EGR cooler go bad and let coolant mix with the exhaust and that start to creating coolant consumption with not visible uh, uh, marks or nothing because the coolant is going directly to the combustion chamber um, and um, if for any reason you happen to have this problem you have to replace the EGR cooler but these components are not cheap so you have to be ready to spend around two thousand dollars just for the parts plus other components that you need to make uh, this uh, job uh, completed and the labor and everything else it, it will depend on the year, the brand, where you're buying the components and the price of the labor that you have to pay. But um, if you have any questions about it, you can comment below. And I know for sure that many of you know how EGR cooler works, but I just decided to do this video so that way you guys understand more if you don't know about this component. Um, comment below if you have anything else to add to the video. Uh, share your opinions, your thoughts and experiences. If you're a mechanic, you can share your experience too. Uh, you can find me as Francisco Moya YouTube on Instagram too. You can see what I'm doing. You can send me a message and I will reply to you when I have the time. And uh, I hope you like this video and thank you for watching.